Hi, and welcome back to Narrations by Sean. We're back at it with the Entitled People subreddit stories. It's all about crazy customer service experiences. You know how this goes. Grab your favorite snack, a drink, and put your feet up because we're jumping in. Our first story today is titled, How I Got Kicked Off the Customer Service Desk, hosted by Esther Clemens. Hey all, I'm back with another crazy blast from the past from a big box smiley face store. This one happened back in 2000 when I was just a young naive kid that only dealt with two, maybe three entitled people. I had yet to develop the thousand yard stare or the hard shell that comes with working retail. So I'm working returns when a man about 30 or 35 years old leading an employee that's wheeling up a large entertainment center. This thing is fully assembled and has ornate wood details with a lovely finish. In other words, something you wouldn't find in this kind of store. The man starts off very cordial with, I want my money back. I thought it would fit in my living room, but it's too small. I asked to see a receipt or perhaps the box it came in. He had neither, so I asked the manager of home furnishings to see if there was a similar one for price and barcode, mainly because I doubt we sell anything like this. I asked the man if he'd like to have a seat while the manager checked for this entertainment center. Suddenly, this man turns red and raises his voice. Do I look like I need to sit down? Do you think I need to calm down? I responded politely trying to de-escalate the situation. No, sir. I just simply thought you might want to sit while you wait. Then I smiled to help the next customer. His voice raised in a pitch as he shouted, Are you laughing at me? It's not funny. I didn't respond as I attempted to help the customer in line, but it was hard not to find it funny that this man was angry about me doing my job. We are required to smile and greet customers. The manager of furnishing explains that we have nothing similar to this item and asks where he bought it. The man's voice raises in pitch again about an octave above his original sentence. I want it here! I demand to speak to the manager! So the home furnishings manager asks him to wait while I contact the floor manager to come and speak with this man. Meanwhile, the man is ranting in an ever increasingly higher pitch. Useless employees always making me wait and do their jobs at all. Why the heck are you smiling? The last sentence is directed at me. Now he sounds like a boy that hasn't had a voice change yet. And I'm finding it super difficult not to laugh. My coworkers, being veterans of this perpetual nonsense, are barely reacting at all. Other customers are trying hard to stifle their chuckles and avert their gazes. This doesn't help, as the man has now reached a voice that sounds like an angry Mickey Mouse. Children are now stopping as they walk by with their parents, hoping to find out why Mickey Mouse is shouting in the store. I'm now pretty red-faced, the customer I'm helping is out and out guffawing, and this man looks like he's about to explode like an overinflated balloon, and he sounds like he's sucked down enough helium to do it. Thankfully, the manager appeared and settled the man down. He pulled him away from the view of the service desk. He returned to tell me to take a break and calm the heck down before returning to the irate customer. He was able to get the man to understand until he explained that we could not take it back without a receipt. The irate man growled at a similar pitch to a chihuahua before storming off without his fancy entertainment center. I was told that I was not cut out for working the service desk and was demoted to cashier. It took almost a year to develop the thick skin I needed to work retail and the entertainment center was silent auction for the workers to bid on and the proceeds went to Children's Miracle Network. The children that benefit truly thank you, irate Mickey Mouse man. Man, that story brought back some memories. I do not miss my time in customer service because there are so many customers that act just like this. They're in the wrong and somehow it's your fault. To give you some examples, 
I once got yelled at over the phone by a customer because they couldn't get into their account because they forgot the answers to their security questions. Doesn't seem too odd, does it? Well, this person didn't understand what siblings meant, so I had to explain to them that they answered how many brothers and sisters they had. They yelled at me initially and told me that the answer to the question should be three because they know how many kids they had. Thank goodness for the mute button because I would have been like one of those people watching the spectacle that was Mickey Mouse Man. On to story two. This story is titled Polly Want a Karen. Posted by Puzzle Headed Pipe 353. Okay, so just a bit of backstory here. I grew up a Navy brat to immigrant parents. They were both born in Mexico, but my dad went to high school and college in California. He became a naturalized citizen and joined the Navy. While we went to his first duty station in Adak, Alaska, it was just me, my older brother, and my mom. My mom didn't speak a lick of English, but my brother had started picking it up in school. By the time we got stationed in Illinois, my brother was fluent and I had started learning a little bit from Sesame Street. One day, my mom took us to the mall. My brother immediately ran off to play in the arcade and we would meet up later at a certain time at the pet store. Once all the shopping was done, my mom and I headed to the pet store and I went to explore and look at all the animals. I went further towards the back and found a lot of empty cages and fish tanks for sale. In the corner of all of that, there was a large bird cage with a very large bird inside. I don't know what kind of bird it actually was. I just remember that it was big and that I thought it was a parrot. Thanks to cartoons and Sesame Street, I decided to talk to the parrot. Ah, Polly want a cracker? Now, I was back there for quite some time, changing up the sounds to find the bird's language. Suddenly, my mom came and tugged on my arm, and in Spanish, she sternly said, We need to go now. When I turned around, I stopped as I saw there was a small crowd gathering behind me, maybe six people or so. The cashier that had been up front when we came in came and took the enormous cage along with the bird towards the front. There was a blonde lady following him that for some reason I remember being Farrah Fawcett. No, it wasn't actually her. I'd just never seen hair quite that blonde before. My mom hurriedly grabbed my arm again and rushed me out of the store. I didn't see my brother yet, so I was confused and thought I might have just gotten the bird in trouble. We sat at a bench across a ways from the pet shop and just sat there in silence. When I spotted my brother going in there, my mom told me to stay on the bench and not to move an inch. She walked back into the pet store and came out a few minutes later with my brother. This is as far as I can remember. However, this incident came up in conversation with my mom several years later and she filled me in on the rest. My brother walked in and heard a commotion and tried to look for us, but my mom caught up to him pretty quick. They were both stunned to see the blonde lady yelling at the cashier and then to the parrot, switching between them while the bird was clearly losing its little mind, flapping about the cage. Yes, she was yelling at the bird. My brother then relayed what the blonde lady was saying to my mom. I paid a lot of money for a talking bird. Make it talk. Make it talk. Give me a talking bird. It was implied to me that there was a lot of foul or foul language that was omitted from the translation. The poor cashier was beside himself, just standing there trying to get a word in and was shrinking back as this lady was right in his face. What? Do you have a cassette playing back there to try to fool people into buying your stupid birds? I want a talking bird. That's what I paid for. Yeah, cassettes. I know, I'm that old. We still had Betamax too. At the time when my mom grabbed my arm the first time, is when she heard the lady say, Bye, amazing, and bird. 
which were the only words she understood. She looked over at me, then saw that it was me making the sounds and not the bird. She had no way of telling them the bird never uttered even a chirp and that it was me the whole time who happens to be able to imitate several animals perfectly. When she and my brother were in there, watching all hell being unleashed upon this cowering clerk, they both quietly discussed whether they should have my brother tell them what actually happened. Once the lady started throwing what they think were dog biscuits, they turned tail to grab me and noped right on back to the car. My mom didn't know how much that lady spent on the bird, but she said it was definitely over $100. This was the early 80s, that poor, poor bird. Point of interest, the crowd that had gathered just stood there staring at the spectacle except for an old lady that had apparently been behind me most of the time, who was cracking up but trying not to laugh loudly. My mom was pretty sure that that old lady had figured out what I was doing long before the blonde lady was even back there. Old people are evil, y'all. Okay. Just a little bit of time for my thoughts. I gotta disagree with OP here. That old lady was not evil. She was awesome because I've been that person where I'm seeing somebody have a meltdown. Sometimes when I'm a customer. Sometimes when I have to do customer service. Sometimes meltdowns are funny. That meltdown would have been epic to watch. That woman didn't realize that you have to train a bird to talk. I would have loved to have been in that pet store. Can you imagine how hilarious that would have been if something like YouTube existed then? So you have a kid who can do perfect bird calls and other animal sounds. So a ridiculous customer thinks they have the world's smartest bird and they run home with it. And then they're shocked, I tell you, shocked when the bird isn't holding a conversation with them immediately. Oh, um, that would have been so funny. Anyways, that story was about the funniest story I've ever read on Reddit. So I hope you enjoyed it as much as I did. Like, share, and subscribe. And we'll keep churning out these stories. Please keep coming back and helping me grow my little community. Not only do I want to continue reading Reddit stories for all of you, but I'm actually working toward being a voice actor and a narrator. So this is just one of the things that I'm going to be working on. Thanks so much for stopping by and we'll see you next time.